Welcome to Too Many Tabs, a podcast, the only podcast. It's a podcast. What is a podcast? What is life? What is meaning? Are any of these we things... We do a podcast where we take turns doing research. Take turns, sure. Okay, mostly I do the research. Yeah. And then I explain things I learned on the internet and at the library to you in detail. And then you have silly reactions and we all have a good giggle. Oh, and then people usually realize that, oh, I've been sitting in my driveway after driving home from work. Yeah, because they're like, this is a really delightful podcast because it's the only podcast. Too many frauds and too many scammers that we wish weren't real. Too many cons and too many spammers and we're starting to feel like we got too many tabs open. It's too many tabs. Remember to smile. Uh, so we're back, and we just recorded our warm up episode, and it's going to be longest warm-up. the longest warm up ever because it was me describing <laughs> everything I did at the Democratic National Convention, and by everything I mean most, just I, like hanging out with Philly D. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah me and Phil DeFranco. <laughs> um, but uh, with all of that, that episode is the first time we are putting it up for free. Yeah, uh, we want to give everybody a little taste of an episode. <laughs> a little? That, we got There's a big slice of taste in this. Listen, a big slice of cheesecake listen, right there. You're getting to buy one, get one on that one. Um, but it's a fun what's episode. Chicago's dessert. Dessert. Like everybody has. Well, a... they have the worst pizza and the worst hot okay, dogs in the world. All right. But beyond I was that, thinking what their dessert is, because like I was gonna say a big slice of oh. cheesecake, but that's New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel well, like everybody has cheesecake though. I don't want to give New York. Uh, New York doesn't deserve all of cheesecake. No, no. There's different types of cheesecake, but there's like a New York cheese. I don't give a fuck. I don't even want to give them that. Why? Why are you so mad at? Because New York they right have now? the Mets, okay, and nobody likes the Mets. <laughs> All right, so with that though, uh, we had a really good time on the pot, on the the warm up this week. Uh, so check that out. Uh, also, all of my stand up shows are all live. Tickets are available. Uh, September fourteenth, Jersey City, uh, Philadelphia, the twenty first, twenty second, and then St. Louis, Indianapolis uh, in September. And then now also we have my Phoenix, Arizona, and Dallas shows in November. Phoenix Tickets, is back, baby. Phoenix is back, and Dallas has been added. And we are trying to do uh, good uh, help. Handing out stuff, getting things in type of deal. I don't know. We're working on stuff. There's things. There's stuff. Oh There's things. That I don't want so I haven't funny. nothing's confirmed, but I just want to say that I'm trying to do nice people stuff. Yeah, we're trying I'm trying to, to be a good boy. Trying to be a good person. Yeah. Anything else I should plug? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I think we're just gonna get started this week because this week's episode is about uh Hetty Green. Hetty Green. Yep. You're just an amazing You see? Yep. <laughs> I know so much about this. So That's the point. I pick things you don't know. That's the entire podcast. I explained it at the beginning. Yeah, but how am I supposed to do good SEO if I don't know what it is? You're going to learn what it is, and then you can write the SEO. But then where, how would I even know what to hit look Hit the for? button. Okay, I'm going to hit the button, and when we come back, if you guys do not want to hear us uh, play commercials, then you should join us on Pearlmania500.net, also known as patreon.com slash Pearlmania500 to join us at the $5 team lead level. And then you can get these shows ad free or whatever. My eyes are dead and rolling in the back of my skull. <laughs> We're back. Are you ready to learn stuff? I'm ready to learn stuff. Because I found someone who you don't know. Okay. And that's exciting for me. Yeah. Because uh, whenever I can get into the history stuff and yeah. you don't know it, I'm in. Hetty Green? That means Hedy nothing. Green. So Henrietta Holland Robinson was born in 1834 okay. in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Okay. She was the daughter of Edward Robinson and Abby Howland. Um, they are, were, the richest whaling company in in which is whaling family that owned the whaling company in that city. Her family members were Quakers who owned a large whaling fleet. Um, and she did have a younger brother, but the, uh, but the brother passed away young. Okay. Okay. So, so Hetty is the only child. I have a question. Mm. Did you pick this because I was screaming about RFK cutting off a dead whale head? No. So this is just, we're just living a world <laughs> where for some way reason. I know. <laughs> so, you know what here's what happened there is a theme this month okay i accidentally fell upon a theme and i think you're gonna figure out the theme by the end of the month okay no doubt okay uh the listeners probably figured out sooner okay see what i did there oh, <laughs> but 
Um, it's not that. But when I was doing the research and I remembered the whale stuff, I did laugh because yeah. of the RFK whale stuff. Oh my god! The, my insurance agent brought it up. I yep. Everybody's talking. About I know it. it's so crazy. He put plastic bags on their heads. Yeah, of the kids' heads. Yeah. But no, it was we were doing insurance stuff, and I mentioned he's like, "What do you do now?" I'm like, "I make content." And he's like, what? <laughs> and so like a month ago, I told him about the bear. Not even a month. I think it was three weeks ago. Yeah. I told him about the bear thing with RFK. Yeah. And then he called me out of the blue <laughs> and was just like, listen, I just heard about the whale thing. <laughs> and I was like, he's, I've talked to this insurance agent twice in my entire life. Once when I got into a car accident uh-huh. and then a couple weeks ago to like ask about a policy question. Yeah. And now he's like, every time RFK does something, he, he texts me. <laughs> and he's like, did you hear that? He just, he just came out against chemtrails. <laughs> listen, we got it. Okay. Okay. Right, hold on. Hetty's father, Edward Mott Robinson whose nickname was Black Hawk. Black Hawk. Okay. He was called that by his associates, was tall, handsome, and a Quaker from Providence, Rhode Island. He was renowned for his ability to drive a hard bargain. Okay? Okay. Black Hawk. I'm I'm just in a world where a Quaker is, has the <laughs> most know. badass name <laughs> I've ever have. heard. This is, a, this is a badass Quaker. This okay. is a badass Quaker. <laughs> so Blackhawk was a man of explosive character. Wait, hold on real quick. Real uh-huh. quick. Every time you say Blackhawk, yeah. we have to go... <laughs> Blackhawk <laughs> was a man of explosive character whose determination to override anything that stood in his path became like a character trait. It's what he was known for. Oh, really? If you were a hurdle in his way, he was going to blast through you. He's not trying to jump over or go around. Okay? <laughs> He's like Black- the Kool-Aid man. He just bursts He's- through the Black wall. Black Hawk is Kool-Aid what, 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 man. What, what, what? Um, his wife was what was then described as an invalid. Okay. With a very weak disposition. Um, it was described that her disposition was as weak as her body. That's harsh. That's Damn. a harsh thing to write. Damn. Guys. Damn. You know what? I bet it was. <laughs> what? Worms. It's, this it's probably is worms. not an episode about RFK Jr. It's probably worms. I'm just going <laughs> to. Listen, there's a lot that we learned over the years with medicine mm-hmm. and like a big part of it. I, I'm parasites. I am not. Yes. Yeah, getting rid of parasites. It was just about washing your hands one day. Mm-hmm. Cooking and then the meat all the way. Cooking the meat all the way. Yeah. And then uh, not getting parasites. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, look how much taller we all are. <laughs> look how much longer we're living. Yeah. 37. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one day they were like, hey, have you heard of this stuff called ivermectin? Um, So his wife was, in their words, too feeble for the task of raising a vigorous and healthy daughter who thrived in horseback riding and outdoor sports. Okay. So Hetty is an outdoor girly. She's a horse girly. She loves adventure. Yeah. She's uh, what we would describe as like a tomboy. Okay. Um, Hetty's character was consequently molded by the male members of her family, Mostly her father and her grandfather. Okay. Okay. Uh, at the age of two, Hetty was sent to live with her grandfather. Wait, at two? At two. At two? They, too much for the mom. It, too much. Jesus. I'm, I'm just, too tired. I just expected like six. Yeah. I expected like, oh, she's in a horseback riding. She's in all these different things. Yeah. Like six would be like no, two. Two. Two, overwhelming. Ooh, um, terrible two. So sent to live with the grandfather. The grandfather's name is Gideon Howland. Gideon's a cool name. And her aunt Sylvia. Uh, Hetty would, what happened is Gideon, he is the patriarch of the family. He's the guy that started the whaling business. He's actually in charge of everything. And Black Hawk had ma- married into this. Hold on. Sorry, did I say Hawk? No, I just want to. Um, so Sylvia and her sister are Gideon's two daughters. And he married the, the weak daughter. I don't know. It's all very... Okay. Of that time. But so she so she sent to her mom's dad? Yeah. Okay. Got so, it. To Gideon's house where her mom's sister is going to take the lead on raising her with the grandpa. Gotcha. So grandpa's eyesight is going because he's older. Don't like And so, happening. no, Hetty, her job every day is to read him his newspaper and all of his mail. Oh. So she's reading him all of his stock quotations, commerce reports. And during this, her grandfather's teaching her all about the family business. Gotcha. Right? Um, the only motherly love and affection she received was from her aunt Sylvia. Real quick, the family business is murdering whales. Yes. Okay, just want to be. Yeah, murdering whales. Murdering whales. Yep. Got it. Um, 
She often went with her father or grandfather. So again, she's living with the grandfather and the aunt, but they're not far away from the dad and the mom. It's just that I think the mom couldn't handle what was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, she's always around her family. It's just that this the is primary a, It's an Everybody Loves Raymond situation. They're just down the street. They're just down the street. They're just down the street. I understand. Um, so she often went with her grandfather or father to the, do all of their errands, if you will, when it came to running the whaling business. And yeah. So... She would often go to the docks with them, uh, where she learned a lot of rough language as a part of her business education. Rough Quaker language. In her later years, whenever she was angry, she frequently resorted to very colorful expletives and she that she had picked up from her long-forgotten uh, sailor friends. Hetty and her father would often interrupt their business at the docks by visiting the nearest free lunch counter because Black Hawk was not a man to spend money on food when he could get it for nothing. That's amazing. Okay. I'm, listen, the fact that she curses like literally a longshoreman <laughs> is incredible. I'm now picturing like a seven-year-old child <laughs> yeah. with a New England accent. Oh, you got now. Like, yeah. like, like oh, I will fuck you if you want to be <laughs> six pence none to reach yeah, I, I think you've gotten some things mixed oh, up. Oh, you got <laughs> Oh, uh, well, me. So what happened was you because got a promo of what code you're just, you're, well, because what of you're describing right now became an issue. Sylvia and her mom, uh, Hetty's mom, actually became so worried that she wasn't going to be able to get married. Oh, because she baby. curses so much. <laughs> and she's such a tomboy. She's un- she's, they're like, oh my god, she's outside and she curses so much. She's literally unfuckable. That's yeah. their thought process. Well, okay, no, that she is. She is of a high class stature. Right? She's yes. born in the wealth. Yeah, I understand. There are that. certain expectations of young women of that yes, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's not needing them. Meanwhile, she's spitting. She's spitting. <laughs> she's doing And dip. demanding a free lunch. Anyone here got a zin? <laughs> <laughs> so in her late teens, they send her to boarding schools and finishing schools. Oh, no. They're like, we got a, they got a Marla Hooch her yeah. to get her. <laughs> what does she do then? Does she just stab someone? No, she goes. She goes and she does the best she can. Um, oh, however, that feels mean. However, she is... The whole time in correspondence, as they called it, with her father and grandfather, writing letters back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still helping them with the family business. Oh. So she's she's like doing her finishing school stuff, but still really involved in business stuff. Yeah. Um, she didn't give a shit about her personal appearance. She wore old clothes and didn't really do any primping or like stuff that young women of the time would do with like the big hair and the big dresses. Well, like, to, to be fair, yeah. that stuff was given to young women to do so they wouldn't ask about business. Yeah, exactly. They were like, no, no, no. As long as you do this, they won't notice they don't have rights. Yeah. Spend all day. Well, redoing the whale bones on your corset. Yeah. Like that type of stuff. It, it's a it, Also, side uh, marketing. There you go. Yeah. There See? you go. Hey. Like, we're just killing the whales. But Eddie, guess what? Also. We could make a corset. Corsets. Uh, but also, it's one of those things that I think Versailles was one of the big deals where the reason they had such a, a complicated court culture mm-hmm. was to get the nobles to stop plotting against the king. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like, listen, no, no, no. If every day at 4, if every day at 4 a.m. he has to get up early to get the brush ready because he is the master of the brush to clean the buckle on the king's shoe yeah and that's all he looks forward to he'll never raise an army yeah exactly and it's the same thing with women it was like oh yeah let's make them all care about having big hairstyles and big hoop skirts it's and then they'll never think about the fact that they can be murdered by their husband for profit so what's changed anyway moving on um she didn't care about her personal appearance and this behavior frustrated her mother and Aunt sylvia because they feared what the future would hold for a wealthy heiress uh, who felt more at home at the docks than mingling with members of her class. Oh, no. What will happen if she cares more about the business than just being rich? <laughs> oh, no. Whatever could happen. So Grandpa Gideon actually dies on September 2nd of 1847. <laughs> Hetty is immediately focused on the amount of money she imagined her grandfather must have left her because yeah. they're so close. Um her character suddenly changed the moment she discovered that her name was not included among the beneficiaries. He didn't leave her anything. Really? He gave it all to his son to manage. To Black and the, Hawk. Uh, to Black Hawk and to Sylvia. But none of it was directed directly to Hetty, which she took as a personal affront. And like there was a noted shift in her personality after this. Oh. Right? Like she was like, just like... A, a hawk eyed, hawk eyed about it. But we got a black hawk. It's like it's like she became a different person, right? Yeah. 
So well, it's got to be. It's got to I mean to leave her nothing is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but it's also eighteen forty seven. Yeah. So it's also like normal. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. She it's, took it personally. Yeah, I know. I know. But yeah. it's crazy. But at the time, normal. Yeah. And that's the part I think. I think she thought, oh, but I'm not like other girls. And yeah. he's like, no, you're exactly like other girls. Yeah. Exactly. I know. That's got to fuck her up. Uh, Blackhawk became the head of the Isaac Howland whaling firm upon Gideon's death. And she began uh, she began working with her father even more closely. She learned to read ledgers and trade commodities. And when she was 13, she became the bookkeeper for the business. Wait. Wait. 13? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I thought she was in her 20s. No. When the grandpa died. <laughs> no. She was 11. She was 11. And she was like, you didn't leave me. You didn't leave me? anything, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is such a cooler story already. Uh, she accompanied her father to court- county houses, storerooms, commodity traders, and stockbrokers. In the evening, she would read him the news. Um when Green turned 20 years old, All right. her Aunt Sylvia pressured her to find a spouse. Reluctantly, Green moved to New York City to live with her cousin of her, a cousin of her mother's. During her time in New York, she mingled with the upper crust of New York society and attended many lavish balls. Like She did the whole thing. Um, Hetty Robinson was a rich catch for any man, right? Yeah. She had a lot of money. Um she was also extremely beautiful. I haven't even brought this really? up, but she's gorge by all descriptions. She is like the kind of girl that they write about, like this outdoorsy girl with flushed cheeks, pale skin, long hair. She's got good bone structure. She is gorge, right? So yeah. she's gorgeous and rich. She's covered in whale juice. <laughs> she's gorgeous and she's rich. She's covered in whale juice. She is extremely suspicious of every single man. Oh, yeah. And anyone who'd give her the slightest bit of attention, she would frighten them off on purpose. She didn't trust any of them. Oh, I wouldn't either. Yeah. No, no but she was just smart. like, no. No, that's smart. That's smart. It's, <laughs> you know what I call that? What? Uh, it's a reverse Frozen. <laughs> reverse Frozen. Yeah, because what is it, Anna and Frozen? Yeah. She's the first guy who walks up. It's just like sandwiches. He's like, yeah, whatever. Fuck it. Yeah. I don't. Sure. I'm going to steal your entire kingdom. Yeah. And she's like, bitch, I've read. <laughs> Hetty's like, I've read a book. Hetty's like, I've I been... read it to my grandpa. And he said, you don't talk to any of them boys. I'm not mm-hmm. leaving you shit, by the nope. way. You're 10. You're 10. She's, <laughs> she's like, you're like, not no. leaving me, you I'm, son of a bitch. I read you so many fucking newspapers. I will dig up your I had grave. to write your mail. I will dig up your grave. Um, she expressed little interest in finding a husband. Instead, she spent much of her time eavesdropping on the men as they were discussing the latest Wall Street dramas. Oh. Her relatives were exasperated she's, when she's she doing returned. Insider trading. <laughs> she's standing in the corner doing insider They're trading. They're just like, oh, the pretty girl's standing there. We can talk about whatever. Yeah. She's not listening. She's like, mm, no, mm, no, 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 no. Buy, sell, buy, buy. So she returned several months early with no wedding prospects. Her father was the only person unable to contain his delight when he learned that Green had spent only $200 <laughs> out of her $1,200 budget because she invested the other 1000 in high-quality bonds. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Oh, my God. That's the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard. I love, you know what? She did a patriarchy kung fu. Yep. That's what she did. She was just like, Oh, no, I don't know what you're... I don't know what you're... I had an from. aunt who she used to play golf. Mm-hmm. Decent at golf. Yeah. It's how she won every contract she ever did. Yeah. Because what she would do is she would go play golf, and when she would, she would pretend for the first three holes to just not know what she's doing. Yeah. So all the dudes would get real muscled up. Be like, Let me, watch me hit this drive. <laughs> and then by like the second they were behind... Because they were so flustered from trying to show her. Yeah. Then she just played golf normal. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I don't have to beat me. I had to beat you. I just oh. have to make you lose. And that's how you win. That's Do you want to take a little break? You, we should I need take a, a drink. Break. Okay. We'll take a little break. I need to go get a root beer from the fridge. When we come back, mm-hmm. you're going to tell me more about this fascinating woman. Please don't tell me there's a turn because I actually Hedy like her. Hetty Green. Hetty Green. You're going to love her. Okay. <laughs> Good. I don't. I don't want to make any promises. I am really invested. I like like her as a person. And if we, if if I'm telling you right now, if eugenics starts getting involved, I'm gonna be really mad. Okay. Okay. Let's take a break. We're 
we're back. We're here. We're Everything's here. happy. Everybody's having a good time. <laughs> Nobody just was in the middle of a 90 minute Zoom call. <laughs> Everybody's doing good. We, we're like, we're going to get root beers. Yeah. Uh, we lost the track of time. No, lost track of time. 90 minute Zoom call. Okay. In the story. Okay. That I'm telling you. Okay. In oh, this episode. Oh my God. Get I, back into it. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me breathe. Whew. I'm ready. Okay. We're back in New Bedford. She's back. Okay. okay. She, remember, she went to New York to go uh, try to find a husband. She, she didn't do it. You're going to have to remind me who she is. <laughs> this has been hours. Hetty Green. Hetty Green. Okay, so the last time we were talking, before the break, yeah. she had been sent to New York to try to find a husband. Instead, she, she invested found, her money. She, instead, she found really good deals on Wall Street and yeah. invested all the money. And, in I was like, and I'm like, I love her, and I co-sign all of her behavior yeah. for the rest of her and life. And I said, I feel like that's a little early on. She's I, still in her 20s. No, you know what? I've learned uh, from you uh, and from your episodes <laughs> that whenever someone does something cool at the beginning of an episode, uh-huh. they're going to be cool throughout the rest of the episode. <laughs> that's definitely what we've learned. Especially if they live till, I'm going to guess, like 1920. Mm, okay, so... Uh, she gets back to New Bedford with, you know, her new stocks and bonds. And at the same time, her dad has decided, Blackhawk. Blackhawk. Um, has decided he's, they're getting out of the whaling business. He's, I you know. You can't get out of the whaling bit. Whaling is the future, all um, right? Where are they going to get their oil for their lamps? Well, great news. The oil that they've been sucking out of the whales for the lamps uh, there's this new thing that everybody's talking about. It's called like a petroleum. Oh, oh really? my God. Where do you find out about petroleum? Wait, they went from oil to oil? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so he was, he uh, obviously he's the kind a of person. A Quaker who, oil baron? <laughs> no, no. He didn't get into petroleum. Oh. He didn't get into petroleum. He saw the writing on the wall. Oh. He saw that there's this new thing coming up. Got it. We think we don't think whale oil is going to be he's like as selling, profitable. He's like selling physical newspapers is stupid. Let's do TikToks. Yes, okay, exactly. Okay, gotcha. Um, so uh, she spent the next six years sh- uh, shuttling between New York City and New Bedford. Uh, she would go to New York to assist her father and the new business and investment opportunities they were taking. They were d- investing in all kinds of stuff. Big into um, investments in China. That's Big all I into could China. find. Okay. It was like, it's very vague when they talk uh, about... That feels opium. It's, that feels like opium wars? No, 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 Allegedly. <laughs> How long has she been dead? A long time. Okay, then I don't need to... I'm going to... Allegedly. Um, du- I'm going to double down on the opium war button for So her. they're finding new investment opportunities. Okay. So she's doing that in New York. And then uh, uh, every other day, she's going to New Bedford to hang out with her Aunt Sylvia because she's obsessed with um, watching Aunt Sylvia's money. Okay, so oh. she trusts her dad. Her dad is just like her. W- will go get the free lunch, is going to cut the coupon, is going to like save every single penny. A miser. A miser is the yep. word. Miser. Um, but her aunt likes to live. Her yeah. aunt's like, we're going to get the steak What's and salmon. What's the point of being rich? She, her, that's very much her aunt. I don't her know if like, you I noticed. I don't understand. I just want to throw out there, I'm with her aunt, okay? Yeah. All right. There's a right side of a menu for a reason. Whoa. Okay. Enjoy sitting over there on the appetizer side of the menu. <laughs> Some of us are going to go to entrees. Some of us are going to get a risotto. Um, so she would go to her Tell aunt's house. Tell me about house. your scallops. Are they from the bay? Only the bay. Day boat scallops. Um, she would bug her aunt constantly. Yeah. She'd be like, go to her house and be like, did you get a new tablecloth? Why? You had a perfectly good tablecloth. Why are you getting new candelabras? You already have candelabras. Like pestering her because... She is slightly obsessed with the fact that her aunt's probably going to leave her money as a beneficiary, so she doesn't want her to spend any of it. Because also, because as far as she's concerned, mm-hmm. at the age of 11, that was her money <laughs> from the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. I'm so serious. I know. It's so crazy <laughs> that she definitely thinks that she's is like, her She's like, stop mo- spending my money on candlesticks. Oh, listen, I've met these people. <laughs> I've met these people from where I'm from. Uh-huh. Like, oh my God, let me tell you, growing up in the suburbs, there'd be mm-hmm. so many times to be like, ugh. Yeah. Can't believe they're just on all of this, all uh, of this opulence and wealth. What do you need two shirts for? <laughs> While residing in New York City, Hetty met her future husband, <gasps> Edward Henry Green of Vermont. Oh. By age. Uh, Great grandfather of Hank and John. <laughs> No? Oh, my God. That'd be funny uh, if it was by true. By the age of 44, Edward was a partner at Russell Sturgis and Company and had become a millionaire in his own right from business endeavors in China. 
<laughs> this feels it's like it's funny because I had to change all when I was going through all these historical documents to yeah. pull this. It, they would say the Far East, oh. or like it's like in hair, like they use the word Oriental, yeah. with abandon, yeah. I'm like not about rugs, yeah. just everything, yeah. So I'm like it was business endeavors in China, yeah. Her father encouraged uh, the marriage, but with the clear stipulation that Edward Green would not inherit any of Hetty's money. Yeah. Okay. That's so, smart because let me let me tell you yeah. something. Black Hawk knows. <laughs> Black Hawk knows. Black Hawk. <laughs> Black Hawk's like you're not gonna catch this Quaker. <laughs> All right, because here's the thing: a guy that rich, yeah, he would definitely marry her and then murder her and keep the money. Boom. And it's back in the day too when you could just be murdered. She just got exhausted. She died she, of exhaustion. She fell on that knife seventeen times. Whoops! That is on the back of the neck. Yeah, that Philly case. Mm, yep. Um, so specifically, the will stated that it quote free from debts and control of the inheritance of any such husband. So. Basically, he wrote out what we would call a prenup, but yeah. also a postnup. Oh, that was like, even if she does die, you get none of this. Yeah. Okay. And then it also said any such husband. So even if she remarried, that one too. Okay. Blackhawk wasn't playing. Um, Blackhawk. When Hetty's inheritance was safe, because he signed off on all the documents, the father encouraged the marriage. Okay. Yeah. In, He's like this moron. In this eight, moron's in it for love. Lame, idiot. Lame. Start a podcast. That's what real love is. <laughs> All the money. There's no more money in when whales. <laughs> All the money's in podcasting. <laughs> Brought to you by Factor Me. <laughs> um, we don't. It sucks. We don't have an ad read this week. I know because we we've been I will tell living. you about this. I tell you about some deal meals, not deals. Let me tell you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Some delicious stuff. Talk to me about that Gouda chicken. Um, Hetty and Edward. Okay, here's the other thing about Edward, the new husband. Yeah. He's the opposite of Hetty, too. Loves nice things. I'm going to tell he you wants- something. Can I just throw out something real ahead. quick? Just because I don't even know anything about him. Yeah. I hate Edward. Okay, good. I hate that he goes by Edward. Instead of Eddie? Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust the, I don't trust the full Edward. Ed? Yes. Ed, Eddie? Sure. sure. Eddie? Sure. I would trust an Ed, Ed, or an Eddie. Okay. But I don't trust... <laughs> And Edward. Um, he loved nice things. Of course he loved he did. the best suits. He loved a fine glass of wine. Of course he did. He liked Hetty. He, the wow, nicest thing. Wow. Yeah. I so, like fine goods too. After they announced their engagement, after yeah. all of this process they had to go through, Black Hawk dies. <gasps> I know. Thank God there's paperwork. Um, he left Hetty almost a million dollars in cash, along with real estate and interest, and over four and a half million to be held in her trust. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Like, that's a lot of money today. <laughs> and I can even, back then money. she was like, I'm gonna murder so many people. <laughs> Her, this is wait, 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 this is like the eighteen sixties. Yeah. Eighteen sixty five. Woo girl. <laughs> Rich. Girl. Guess what? What? Aunt Sylvia was so sad about what happened to her brother or her brother in law, sorry. Um she died 18 days later and she left all of her money to Hetty Rob Hetty as well. Hetty. Hetty. So now finds herself in possession of what we would describe as extreme wealth. Okay. Oh this God. is crazy money. Hetty was now brought face to face with something that never ceased to worry her for the rest of her life. This is good. This, all of this happening at the same time creates uh, inherent terror. And that is that she will be assassinated for her money. This fear was brought to a head because Black Hawk's dying words to her were, I have been poisoned by a band of conspirators. You will be next. Watch out for yourself. And then he died. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Her dad's last words are, I have been murdered. I have been poisoned by a band of conspirators. They're coming for you next. Yes. Watch out for yourself. And then, and then this is he, this is like an hour after she got married. Yeah, basically. And Sylvia's death coming so soon made her even more suspicious that she had been poisoned as well. Oh man, um, a cabal, a cabal, a cabal is after her. She was. And po- then, hold on, no, I'm oh, not done. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. this is at a time when you had to worry about cabals. Yeah, you had to worry about. This them. is like okay, and poisoning. So I don't know if you know this, right? Mm. In the old days, yeah. there were two things you had to worry about. Okay. Number one, cabals. Uh-huh. Number two, quicksand. 
<laughs> Those were two common fears. <laughs> Big fears. Used to be terrified. I used to think quick. Oh, and, and banana peels. Look out. Banana peels on the street. My slip. That you actually die. That was legitimately a problem in New York around <laughs> this time. They were like, God, that was off the streets. Yeah, people <laughs> slipping on banana peels was because of the sheer amount. So because good. it was just garbage everywhere. Yeah. They only have discovered trash cans in New York this year. <laughs> You know how crazy that is? So and they're calling it an innovation. And like, it's like, guess what we got, guys. Every other city, every other city has had trash cans, with the exception of New York, where they've just had piles of garbage. Yeah, and they're like, I don't know why we have so many rats. Yeah. In New York, you can become a garbage man long enough mm. that they will make you a general. I love they that. They let them dress up like little generals with stars on their epaulets. Have you ever been, have you ever seen the work that garbage people do? They deserve Listen, to be generals. I'm not they saying. They deserve awards. I'm not saying they don't. I'm agreeing with you. I also think it's very funny to be the general of trash. General I just, trash? I just, sorry, Commandant, what are you? I'm, I'm Commandant Compost. Like, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> um, so at the funeral for her Aunt Sylvia, she stated that she overheard two relatives whispering together, and she was convinced that she was next on the list. They whispered, we are going to get everything when Hetty dies. And the other one said, and when we do, we're going to add a greenhouse to this place. This remark had a double sting. It not only involved the expenditure of money, but it sat, it made Hetty think that there was a plot against her life. She, that day, she locked herself in her room for days and refused to eat anything that was not prepared by her own hands. That's... But I love that she got mad that they were going to build on the house. They're like, so if I die, you're going to take my money and then you're going to spend it on building this house. But also, but also the craziest part of it is that they're like very, it's very Ebenezer Scrooge in that like, we're going to get her money and, and the fucking house. (laughs) Like that's like, not like we're going to get her money and then we're going to go to Tahiti. You know what I mean? Not, we're going to get her money and we're going to go somewhere else. We're going to go right here. Yeah. I'm going to stand here on her grave. And then I'm going to build out on it. Okay? That's so crazy. Because clearly this place needs a greenhouse. That's so wild. So although Hetty was the primary beneficiary on both estates, uh, most of the assets are placed in trusts, entitling okay. Hetty to only income from them. Um, the Blackhawks estate was estimated to be $6 million, but all but $1 million in, was in the trust. Um, Sylvia's estate... She actually had to fight in the courts. She went to court um, because there was this whole thing about there was an uh, addendum added and they were saying it was a forgery. Some of the cousins were saying it was a forgery, basically trying to fight over the money. All the cousins were trying to yeah, fight. Yeah, that usually it happens, happens a that lot, happens. right? Uh, it actually, the courts ruled against Sil- uh, Hetty uh, finding a technical, you know, there was issue, a, yeah, technical there's a, there's issue. There's a comma in the wrong spot. And Hetty never forgave any of the lawyers who were party in the decision against her. And from that moment, she never attain, entertained any respect for judges. Uh, many of her later actions were motivated almost entirely out of her hatred for lawyers. She considered them all a band of grasping individuals who would not hesitate to, quote, wheedle the last penny from a defenseless woman. Lawyers and assassins thus became Hetty's principal enemies. In her opinion, the two professions were inter- interchangeable as one plotted against the purse and the other plotted against the person. That is, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> to be like, no, I. there's three things you need to worry about in this world. Mm-hmm. Number one, quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> number two, a cabal of assassins. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And number three, lawyers. <laughs> Where's she wrong? Where's she Where, wrong? She's not wrong. Where are the lies? She's like, listen, I have all this Chinese opium money <laughs> and people are trying to kill me for it. No, that's not true. I never said that. What? That there was Chinese opium money. I know. You said we're assuming it's Chinese opium. I never said we were assuming it was Chinese opium money. I'm assuming it is. Okay. You can be over there unsued. Um, I'm going to be over here with all of the lawyers and assassins. I'm saying that that's probably didn't, what, not what happened. So exhausted from lawsuits and concerned about um, Hetty's cousins trying to come after her for this alleged forgery, uh, her and her husband moved to London. Um, they London, lived, Eng- London, England? London, England. Okay. They lived in the Langham Hotel. Um, and when they got married, she made him sign papers, releasing her from liabilities and any debts of his. Okay. Okay. So there's a prenup, a postnup, and she had him sign a document that said if he has any debts ever, they're his own fucking responsibility. That's smart. Yeah. That's good. Business. You should sign that for me. Should have done it. You should have. Um, Could we still do that? Nope. Too late now. So... 
They had two kids, Ned and Sylvia. She named one of her daughter Sylvia. Okay. She named the other one Black Hawk 2. Black Hawk 2, newly electrified boogaloo. Because so they're just getting you, electricity. I want to tell you something. Maybe gaslight boogaloo? Um, so here's the thing. This whole thing I've told you about Hetty, this whole backstory, is because she's really good at investing. Yeah. She loves Wall Street. She loves investing. She loves all of that stuff. Yeah. She followed what would be considered then a contrarian investing strategy. In her words, quote, I buy when things are low and nobody wants them. I keep them till they go up and people go crazy for them. That's it. That's what I believe. That's the secret to all of my success. Okay. She buys low, sells high. Yeah, that's okay. kind of whatever. Which is not what people used to do back then. What? No. What? What do you mean? Not what people used to do. What you mean back in the 1860s? The 1860s people 1860s. used to buy high and sell low. What do they used to do? They buy. They buy whatever. They buy and they everything. Held it. They buy everything, and sell everything. There was no thought behind it. Okay. Because this is a time of pure abandon. This is the Gilded Age. Okay. Right? So, like, they're just like, there's money. We're doing money stuff. Okay. She's the only person who had restraint. Hetty Green. Hetty Green. Okay. Okay. She was just a, a woman who who wasn't even supposed to be doing this. Yeah. Talking about stocks. Okay. And people weren't listening to her, uh, but she was making success quietly. Okay. okay. So, during this time, which was around the 1870s, the United States government was in deep difficulties resulting from the civil war okay enormous sums of money were needed to do reconstruction of homes and industry factories ships um new enterprise and forward trade were all looking towards the government for survival um lawmakers were being harassed every day um and they decided to turn to printing presses to solve their problem yeah. and printed a lot of money yeah almost overnight the country was flooded with a large quantity of quote greenbacks but these were worth only about half of their face value and the consequent reduction of government bond values soon attracted the attention of hetty green and she began to accumulate bonds for as low as 40 cents on the dollar so she's in London. She's always watching what's happening. And she starts buying bonds and greenbacks really low. Yeah. 40 cents. She continued this practice for two years. And uh, she also began to invest in bonds of Rock Island Railroad. Gradually, the vast power of the American industrial giant began to assert itself in the world. Um, and bond prices began to appreciate in value. Um, from... The merest fraction of a point to the upside meant thousands to Hetty Green. In a single year in London, she made $1.25 million. In a single day, she cleared $200,000 a day Jesus. on these bonds coming back. Uh, she, The Green family returned to the United States in 1873. Uh, husband and wife at this point are living separately because they often fight specifically about what Hetty considers her husband's gambling. He's not a gambler. He just buys stocks like she does, but she thinks what he does is gambling. <laughs> like she doesn't respect him. Oh, she's like, you, she's like, you have a shitty system. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you're really bad at this. You should no, not no, stop no. doing it. Yeah, yeah, that's... And he won't because he's like, I'm a man of business. And she's like, well, I'm smoking you over here in the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just idiot. quietly smoking him. Um, yeah. So they're fighting and living separately because of this. She literally just cannot be around him because they're fighting so much obsessed. about this. Obsessed. <laughs> obsessed. And what year is this? We're in the 18, 1870s? 1873. Is what okay. I'm about so she's, yeah. So she's like mid 30s. Yeah. So in 1885. Sorry, late 30s. John J. Cisco Bank, that one that Edward works at, collapses. <gasps> He's a partner at the bank. It yeah. turns out that. Well, the, one of the other partners was doing like some fraud schemey stuff. Um, and it turns out that Edward had been hiding some debt there that he didn't want to tell his wife about. He owed the bank over $700,000. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew Edward was a piece of shit. Piece of shit, Edward. And let me tell you something. You know how crazy it is to owe $700,000 in 1873? <laughs> That's so much fucking money. That is so much goddamn. <laughs> I, babe. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Mm. The brokest we we ever got. Yeah. Is there I remember there was a day where you and I sat at the table mm -hmm. and we were going over which late fee was the smallest. Yep. Because uh -huh. it was tight. It was like yeah. right when we were first like moved in together. Mm. And I remember thinking like I never want to do this again. Yeah. And like it sucked because I hated it because it's like I'm just throwing this empty money at nothing. Yeah. This dipshit Edward. Mm -hmm. Not an Ed. Not an Ed. Not an Eddie. This dipshit. He ran up seven hundred thousand. 
1873 money. Yeah. And I looked up how he did it. He was doing, um, what's that thing uh, from that Leonardo DiCaprio movie? Oh, penny stocks? No, but no, short sailing. Oh, short selling. Yeah, so he's borrowing money to make... So she's right. He is fucking gambling. He's, been, he's, he's gambling. fucking gambling. He was short selling the railroad uh, stocks that he owned through this bank. So he owned Kentucky and some other he needed, So, So the, the stocks he owned, he mm. needed them to go down. Yeah. And they didn't. They, in fact, did better than they've ever done. Yeah. And then he ended up broke. Yes. Moron. So... He owes the seven hundred thousand dollars in debt, right? Hetty Green does not know about this. She he kept her in the dark about it, right? So she had gone. They were starting to fight about something, and she has decided that she's leaving this bank because she heard that the bank is collapsing, right? So she hears through the grapevine because again she's watching all this stuff, and she's gonna go move her bank money from her bank to this other bank called the Chemical National Bank. Okay. So she wants to transfer her. $26 million in stocks, bonds, and mortgages and deeds to the Chemical National Bank because this bank is closing. And when they get there, they're like, your husband has this $700,000 debt. And she's like, so what? That seems like your fault. Yes, not mine. That, that's a your problem. And they're like, well, it turns out that he had uh, intermingled their finances a bit. And so 500000 of that was hers. Right now, she has $26 million. Yeah. But they're saying they're not going to transfer her money until she pays that five hundred thousand. Uh huh. So she's like, "All right, fine, okay." She pays the five hundred thousand, transfers her two twenty six mil minus the five hundred to Chemical Bank, but she's fucking pissed. Yeah, this is a lady who gets mad when people <laughs> fucking buy a tablecloth. She made him sell his two best horses and his carriage. Right. She's like, we're selling your carriage and your horses to pay back the money to me. And then she moved him into the Union League Club and gave him an allowance of one dollar a day. He had no transportation, one dollar a day, and he had to live at the Union League, which now Union League is considered fancy, fancy, yeah. fancy. It was not back then. Let me tell you something. I, so I looked it up. Mm. Seven hundred thousand dollars in 1873 is worth eighteen point three million dollars today. <laughs> He shit the bed for eighteen point three million. He was like, "These are railroads. We could definitely short." Sell ah, them. was it eighteen seventy? Nobody's fucking using the railroad anymore. Now these horses—that's where the money, <laughs> that's is. money is. Fucking idiot. So, and now your wife is keeping you at a fucking tenement home. Yeah. For a dollar a day. Yeah, a dollar. How a day. much is a dollar? Hold on. <laughs> how much is one dollar? It's funny how often on this podcast we it's have to use this website. It's twenty six dollars and twenty one cents. Rachel Ray couldn't make that work. No. Rachel Ray in 2003 <laughs> was out for $40 a day. Yeah, $40 Listen, a day. we watched one recently. Don't, don't you go on don't this go back. right now. Don't go back. Don't go back. <laughs> we watched she did Philly for $40 a day. It she bought incredible. a cheesesteak and a fucking soda. Oh, it was for $5. For it made me $5 with change left over. Oh, my God. So We had no idea how good we had it. Uh, Green moved her money over to the chemical bank, and she decided to set up an office there. Right, because she's like, you're not gonna fuck me again. It's just- well, also because she's so obsessed with Wall Street. Yeah, but because she's a woman, they won't let her go there. Mm. Right, so she has to do all her business somewhere else. So she sets up an office in quotes at the Chemical Bank. That, but she never actually got an office. Right, so they offered her. They're like, we can give you this room. You have twenty six million dollars in her bank. You can have a fucking office. Yeah, and she's like, no, I don't want it. I don't do business here. She would sit on the fucking floor, surrounded by her boxes of papers, filling out stuff, clipping coupons, literally clipping coupons. And it was written in one newspaper that she used to eat onions all day. And I was like, that's so funny. Like eating onions. Like eating a raw food. onion? But okay, so here's the thing. I think that she is, of course, she's a miser. So she's cheap. She's not spending money on food. She is probably clipping coupons. People used to call her the witch of Wall Street. Or the like, so like, I think they were saying she was eating onions because it played into this like, she's this horrible woman who does banking and like, she's a miser. So, of course, she just sits around eating onions. That being said, maybe she was eating onions. I don't know, but it was written in one paper that she sat around eating onions. I just looked up how much $26 million was in 1873. It's going to hurt your brain. It's 681 million point five. <laughs> she. They almost didn't let her transfer the equivalent of over a half billion dollars. Yeah, for for five hundred. 
Um, this is insane. This which is- also, by the way, is illegal. Like she could have, but also it was in the middle of the bank closing. So like it is, it, it is, and it isn't. I, there, there is some like weirdness there. Today we have what's called FDIC insurance. They didn't have that back then. So, but she would have been screwed. Yeah. Because FDIC insurance only insures up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars based yeah. on each social security number that's tied um, to the accounts and like to like the overall health. So there are there is more insurance that you can buy. Yeah. But it becomes a whole thing. That's why like rich people. I usually have their money in like 70 different fucking banks. Yeah. That's spread out all over the place and all these different types of accounts and all these different, different ways that they can be certified and be like perfect. That is cra- Imagine them walking up and be like, I would like to remove my half billion dollars from your bank. Cause I feel like it's going under. And they're like, Hey, if you take definitely going to go under, if you, yeah, take, if you take out a half billion dollars, not my problem. Not my no. problem. Oh, then pay so us. Here's the other thing. Million. So she's, Refusing to have an office at this bank that she is setting up an office at. She's got her husband, like you said, in tenement housing. I wanted to tell you this. She is only ever living in boarding houses. So like I said, in London, they were living in a hotel. She lives in boarding houses, flats, and hotels because she is avoiding the tax man like the fucking plague. (laughs) Her official residence was still Bellow Falls, Vermont, where her husband is from. And she successfully withstood every attempt to prove she was a resident anywhere else she would assume fake names like mrs hickey mrs nash mrs dewey mrs smith uh this is a quote these names sprang up like mushrooms in the dark of hallways of cheap tenement houses in brooklyn and hoboken and along the bowery she had been classed as a if she had been classed as a resident of new york she would have been liable for an annual payment of thirty thousand dollars so she never became a resident and would just bop around to all these uh, boarding houses I need to know how much that is. Okay. $30,000 is $786,000 today. Mm-hmm. I feel like she could afford it. She could afford it. She's not going to. She is going to stay in hostels instead. This is instead. lunacy. Um, She's having roaches crawl over her face. <laughs> she has so much money. She doesn't have to do any of this. No. That's what's great. Like, this is where, like, the billionaire dragon mindset comes in, though. Like, eating onions on the floor. I actually do believe she ate the onions. I should probably ate the onions. I think she did. I bet onions Because it's like that old story about the guy who eats, like, just the bullion cube. Yeah. Instead of actually eating, like, the actually making soup because it's a waste of time. Yeah. Um, It's just so wild to me. Because if she's willing, she's doing all these things also as a, as a dodge. That's the reason why she didn't want the office. Yeah, I know. That's why I was telling you. Yeah, I know. That's so crazy. Because she doesn't want any legitimacy that she's a resident or that she has any office. any proof that she's even physically there. So the other thing is she, she would often go to Chicago and Texas because she had all these investment stuff everywhere. Every time she would leave, um, like so she's planning a trip to Chicago, she would move all of her belongings into the vault of the Chemical National Bank to avoid having to maintain lodging at these, ho- these um, ha- like houses, right? So... The pile of belongings gradually assumed tremendous proportions. One on the second floor was an ever-growing pyramid packing cases and trunks, a wagon, and at one point even a full buggy was in the vault. And none of the people at the bank would ever say anything because, again, she has $26 million in the bank. (laughs) So every time she'd leave town, she's like, oh, I got to go put everything I own from this, you know, meanwhile, boarding house. Meanwhile, they're like, like any one sane person be like, you could just buy a house. No, she's not going to do it. You could afford a house. Not going to do it, buddy. Um, this is so wild. Like, this, this is insane. Now she's known at this point as the queen of Wall Street. Her investing philosophy, people are understanding, because like the, the Wall Street guys are seeing her in the bank. They're seeing that she is known. Eating an onion on the eating floor. Eating an onion on the floor. Known for like getting really solid investment advice from her right uh she was interviewed for multiple newspapers i pulled some of her quotes uh quote in business generally i don't close a bargain until i've reflected it on it overnight end quote big deals big big thoughts out here apparently this was ground baking by the way sleep on it (laughs) (laughs) uh next quote it is the duty of every woman i believe to learn to take care of her own business affairs end quote quote a girl should be brought up as to be able to make her own living, end quote. Whoa, living on the edge over here. Final quote. Quote, whether rich or poor, a young woman should know how a bank account works, understand the composition of mortgages and bonds, and know the value of interest and how it accumulates, end quote. 
a hundred years before women were allowed to do that Radical. without a husband. Radical. A hundred years. Yeah. It was the 1970s before women could get their own credit cards. Yep. And in many cases, be able to get a checking account without a husband or father to sign off on them. Hey, I want- The more you know, it gets worse. <laughs> okay. So the Gilded Age was an era known for its successes, obviously. So she was among the very few investors who did not partake in this. She was known for being frugal and stingy and a miser. You know shit. She... There was a lot of... I wonder if she shot the horses before she probably. left. Probably. She probably cheaper. made them in the glue. No, I'm saying it was, it was probably cheaper to just kill the horse or sell the horse and then buy a new one when you got back. Yeah. Then stable it. Listen. I'm just saying. Whatever was cheaper, she did. I feel like today she would probably be living in a food cart. Probably. Some negative media portrayals included reports that she never turned on the heat or used hot water at her flats. Um, she... She's also known as wearing a single black dress. Now, this is one is true. She wore the same outfit every day, all day. She like wore, a witch. Uh, that's why they called her the witch, because of this big black dress she wore. But also, but that's uh, Mark Zuckerberg shit. Yeah. And Obama shit. And me shit. Yeah, that shit that you want to do <laughs> someday. Just... But yeah, that, that idea of like, oh, it's one less decision I don't to have make. to think about it. Yeah. Um, let's see. What did it say here? What did I write here? She was known for wearing a single black dress that she would not replace until it was thoroughly worn out. Moreover... Uh, she reportedly instructed her laundress to wash only the dirtiest parts of her dresses, a.k.a. the hems, to save her money on soap because they charged you for how much soap they used. That is... Okay. Girl... The harshest accusation You were worth ever. so much money and you were arguing with two cents worth of soap? Yep. She... The, the meanest accusation was that um, she neglected to treat her son. Her son, Ned, had got an injury on his leg. And it resulted in amputation. And people were saying it was that she was such a miser that she mm. didn't take him for care. And that uh, one reporter wrote that she took him to like the free clinic where they would take like. Um, uh, take anybody. Take anybody like the homeless would go there. Yeah. And that that's where she took her son, which is actually patently false. She went to great expense. She They traveled everywhere. They tried to treat her son. And inevitably he lost his leg anyway. Yeah. So. When there was a real situation, she did spend the money and time to get okay. it. Okay. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad that there is proof that that is false yeah. because, like, that feels like we're. We, I mean, it's one of those things where you also you're dealing with a caricature. Yeah. That New York journalists who are just so famously accurate about everything, and God <laughs> forbid, not be treated like content creators. It, that they are drawing a biography, mm. you know? It says almost they're trying to influence. It's like a journalist is like an influencer. Yeah. On on how history is written. Yeah. Oh, okay. History is written by the person who won. Oh. Remember that. Oh, okay. So she once explained her thrift by recounting an explanation her father gave her after he rejected an expensive cigar that was offered to him by a business partner. Quote, I smoke four cent cigars and I like them. If I were to smoke better ones, I might lose the taste from a cheap ones and I won't find it quite as satisfactory. That is honestly, <laughs> that's bars. Blackhawk. That's straight up bars from Blackhawk. Honestly, you know what? I haven't hit this button in a while. I mean... <laughs> Bars, dude. Yeah. Because you know what? I, I understand that completely. I used to be able to drink Bush Light, Miller High Life, and mm-hmm. PBR like it was water because it yeah. is. Yeah. And then one day I, I had something a little bit better. And then when I went back to go drink my Bush Light, my PBR, and my Miller High Life, You're like, That's my body different. wasn't used to having that type of diarrhea anymore. Nope. And so I had to stick with the nicer stuff. Hetty's thriftiness was essential to her invest- investment strategy as well, as it enabled her to buy assets confidently in the midst of financial crisis because it prepared her to live min- on minimal expenses. Yeah. So she went, she took wild investment Rice and choices. Beans. Yeah. Rice and beans. Rice this and is, beans. Yeah, yeah, no, this is the, this, the look back. Uh, you're complete, this is incredible <laughs> because this is in 2020. It was yeah. funny. In 2019, I said, if we ever had a thing like 08, I'd buy as much as I could. Yeah. And then 2020 happened, and the market took the biggest shit I ever saw, and I should have taken every penny we had and just bought whatever I could. Yeah. And I didn't because I was like, we might need that money for ammo. Yeah. Like, I was like, (laughs) I don't know what we're going to need this money for, and things were so scary. Yeah. But in the back of my mind, it was like, go buy Amazon stock right now. So by the end of 1906... Hetty Green uh, was sensing that there was a monetary tide in America that was changing. 
Um, and she began raising cash aggressively to prepare for what she thought was an inevitable crisis. Hardly any other investors appreciated what was happening. Um, and Hetty also feared that trust companies were particularly vulnerable to a financial panic. When one of her friends asked her her opinion on the health of Knickerbocker Trust in the spring of 1907, Hetty warned, quote, if you have any money in that place, get it out the first thing tomorrow. And then sarcastically added, quote, the men at the bank that work th at that bank are too good looking. Mark my words. Get out. <laughs> that, which is incredible that is so that is so an incredible, incredible vibe it's that's we, the most incredible vibe read i've ever had they had to make them real pretty there no, they're not doing good business no no that's what i used to say about la colombe all the time oh yeah so to listeners that probably have had la colombe because it's across the, coffee, the yes, it's, across it, the nation now no, it yeah. was invented here in philadelphia um and the first ever la colombe uh store uh, coffee shop was in Rittenhouse Square and I'll never forget when it opened it was like the place to be every morning before our shifts so you had to yeah. go like get your latte or cappuccino because they hired the hottest dudes ever like they shipped these dudes in from Italy these were hot Italian guys they could speak no English they could say espresso latte that's it yeah and I'm telling you the line was out the friggin door <laughs> and we'd be like the coffee is okay <laughs> Just like the coffee's okay. Like it's just okay. It's not the best coffee I've ever had. But the guys, the Italians that worked there were so handsome that everybody would go there. And that's what I thought about when I read this quote from her. I was like, yeah, the coffee wasn't that good. No, what the I was bank thinking isn't that strong. What I was thinking of is Abercrombie and Fitch. Yes. So Abercrombie and Fitch famously had a lawsuit <laughs> uh because of their staffing practices. Yeah. And I had a buddy of mine who unfortunately he he passed uh so he couldn't really reap all the benefits of this lawsuit but basically it was a discrimination lawsuit because Abercrombie had a three-tiered system for their mm -hmm. employees they had an A team who were all models yeah they were the most gorgeous people they could find in the area they were supposed to work during the highest business hours yeah so especially uh evenings on Fridays and Saturdays daytime all that stuff then there was the B team B team was supposed to work daytime uh, daytime hours, off peak, all that times, you know, during the regular week. And then there was the C team and the C team stocked the shelves Yeah, and they were the uggos. Yeah. And my buddy, he didn't know it at the time. He was C team. He was C team, oh, babe. No. And we all like, he, he was super about it. He loved the Abercrombie and Fitch life. He used to even have like, he would steal whenever they throw out a poster or something, like he would steal it from the dumpster and put it up at his apartment. He okay. was like, I am part okay. of Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh my God, obviously I'm beautiful, all these things. And then when this lawsuit came out, I just remember him being like, oh, no. what do you mean I'm a no-go? Oh, <laughs> like, no. oh, buddy. So Hetty Green was one of the only Americans with plentiful cash in October of 1907 when the panic of 1907 began. Mm. Uh, J.P. Morgan is rightfully credited for facilitating a heroic rescue of the financial system. But unlike Hetty Green, Morgan was caught by surprise. It was only after intense lobbying of several partners of Morgan um, that they finally grasped the situation that was happening. Recognizing her importance in the role as uh, a leading financier, Hetty Green was the only woman invited to attend critical meetings at the J.P. Morgan Library at the height of the panic, which included uh, Carnegie and Rockefeller. Wow. So she's at the table talking about what she saw coming, and they're coming up with a plan. She's wearing a dirty black dress. Dirty black dress. On an onion. Onion. <laughs> just God, you know what you we got to do? idiots. You know what we got to do? Cursing like a whale saying. Fire all the pretties. <laughs> Fire me pretties. Um, the city of New York, actually, the city of yeah. New York came to Green to ask for a loan to keep the city afloat. Um. Do you have any idea how rich you got to be mm -hmm. for the city of New York to be like, please, ma'am, we'll pay a good rate. She wrote a check for one point one million dollars and took her repayment in short term revenue bonds. <laughs> she just fucked the entire city. She eventually inevitably over the course of time, I think she gave them over four million dollars to yeah. keep the city of New York afloat. Oh my god! And then only took back like investments where concrete jungles and dreams are made of. Mm -hmm. That's what she. It, you would not have ever had that song, Alicia Keys. 
if it weren't for Hetty Green. If it wasn't for the Witch of Wall Street. Uh, the Queen of Wall Street at this point. Yeah. She had a, she had a, what's it called? A glow up? No, a rebranding. Rebrand. Um, there's a quote that ha- that what I pulled from a newspaper article from back then. It said, a very short time after Hetty had once demanded a receipt for a nickel trolley uh, for the ride in Hoboken, she loaned four and a half million dollars to the city of New York. <laughs> <laughs> she demanded. I need a receipt for that. Because she's going to write it off because it's for commuting. Five cents. The nickel trolley oh from Hoboken. God. That is insane. Because she's staying at a fucking tenement house. Yeah, no, Because she doesn't want to pay taxes in New York. Meanwhile, she's loaning New York the money <laughs> because they know she lives there. <laughs> like, they, took, they took a loan from someone who has no residence. I'm obsessed. Oh, my queen. <laughs> the panic of 1907 led to the creation of the Federal Reserve System. Oh. That's what the meeting was about. Oh, my her. God. Oh, she invented, she helped. Them. She, her, Carnegie, Rockefeller, and J.P. Morgan met with, was it Woodruff? Woodrow Wilson, Wilson, Woodrow Wilson, who was governor of New York at governor the time. Governor of New York. So that, that was the, took two years, I believe, of the brainstorming of the meeting of the minds to come up with the Federal Reserve System. Because she had seen yeah. the writing on the wall about trusts and things like that. Yeah, and how fast they were all falling apart. Exactly. That is so crazy. Uh, scholars believe that she was a better investor than most of her early Wall Street contemporaries. Green clearly understood the power of compound interest and her focus <laughs> on regular <laughs> modest gains of 6% a year. And frugal living made her fortune more durable than those of Jesse Livermore, who repeatedly earned larger sums of her, but lived more extravagant lifestyles and went bankrupt uh, by the time he was in his late 70s. But it's also one of those things, I bet, I guarantee you, if she had won the lottery, she'd be like, I'll take the full cash out. Absolutely. Well, everyone else would have taken the annuity. Like fools. Idiots. Take the full cash out. Take the full cash out and then invest it. She was a secret philanthropist. Uh, She avoided attention in the press at all times. And she uh, believed in discreet charity. I think, again, because she's a Quaker. Yeah. Um, So she. I forgot she's been a Quaker this whole time. She's been a Quaker this whole time. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) So I keep forgetting she's. Oh, what a sentence. But so she she did. She gave a lot of money to charity, but she never spoke about it. So it's like yeah. there's not a lot of records of it. There's just records that like for tax reasons she did. Um, as a young man, Ned moved away from his mother to manage family properties in Chicago and Texas. Um, in middle age, he returned to New York to live with his mother while uh, it was like her final months with him. Yeah. Okay. There is a long story, but we don't have enough time in the podcast, but like. There's this. She owned a lot of railroad uh, stocks and stuff. Yeah. And the reason she sent Ned to Texas was because she wanted to have this railroad built that she owned a lot of stock in. And then there was this other railroad guy that was trying to fight with Ned. And there was like the, all this back and forth. And then he, the railroad guy that hated Ned and her came to New York to confront her in person and was like, I'm going to build this thing and I'm going to arrest your son because he knew the sheriff. And she was like, if you she's like you've been talking to business Hetty this whole time you've been talking to the owner of a business and the owner of railroad property and blah blah but you've just started talking to a mother and if you harm a hair on my son's head I will kill you and in that moment she took a gun out of one of her her (laughs) cases and pointed it at him and shot in the air in the fucking chemical bank and he ran out and the news report said that his hat fell off and he never went back to get it (laughs) She pulled a gun out in a bank that she owned, and this man thought he could threaten her. Yeah, that she he was going to have her son arrested to to make sure that this railroad oh didn't get God. built. And she was like, "I'll kill you." Hetty Green, Hetty Green. Green's daughter Sylvia lived with her mother until her thirties because Green disapproved of every guy that she brought home as a suitor, suspecting that they were all after her fortune. Mm. Sylvia finally married a guy named Matthew Astor Wilkes. Uh, in 1909, uh, after a two-year courtship, he was a minor heir to the Astor Fortune, which I looked up. The Astor Fortune was built on fur trade monopolies and exporting opium to China. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Wilkes entered the marriage with two million of his own, enough to ensure that Green that he was not a gold digger. Nonetheless, uh, Hetty made him sign a prenuptial agreement, agreement waiving his right to inherit any of Sylvia's fortune. Yeah. In her old age, Green developed a hernia, but refused to have any medical operation, preferring to use a stick to press down the swelling. (laughs) 
Where's Crazy Sally oh. with her stick right now? Hit me with the stick. <laughs> she eventually moved. Like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I, it might hurt a little bit. Let me bite on this onion real fast. <laughs> what an episode. She eventually moved her office to the National Park Bank because um, she thought she got poisoned at the chemical bank, which is such a funny statement. Um, and she feared for her life, so she moved all of her money to a different bank. <laughs> I couldn't find anything about that other than the statement that she thought she got poisoned there and that she left, but I, there was no newspaper stuff about it. Yeah. On July 3rd, 1916, Green died at, uh, Hetty Green died at age 81 at her son's New York City home. According to her longstanding uh, world gri- greatest miser entry in the Guinness Book of World Records, she died of apoplexy, which I had to look up. Okay. Apoplexy is when you are incapacitated or made speechless by extreme anger and it causes a brain hemorrhage. She got so mad her brain broke? She got into a fight with a cook of her best friend over the virtues of skimmed milk and got so mad that this cook was talking shit to her. (laughs) She died. She she died over, over arguing for skim milk. Yeah. Here's okay. There's a it's a longer story. Her friend was her best friend in the world, lived the life of a rich person, yeah, and had a fabulous life and was always trying to get Hetty to do fun stuff, yeah, and go to fancy hotels and spas and dinners. And killed and her. And Hetty was like, no, and never. It killed her. So Hetty used to go to her house and be like, you got it. Why are you doing this? You got to save money. You got to stop yeah. doing this. And I guess Hetty said something about like, there's you don't need like six cooks. You don't need all these waiters in your yeah. house. Like you're meanwhile, one the waiters like this is my fucking job. It turns out the one cook was drunk, and oh. came out of the kitchen and was like, "The fuck are you talking about? My job is skimming milk or some shit. I don't know." But then Hetty went full whaler on him and started cursing up a storm like a longshoreman, like a longshoreman, and her, she cursed him out so hard and got so mad that he she talked to him that way that she died. She had strokes from apoplexy. <laughs> This is by far. Give me your hand. Yeah, let's hold my hand. This is your best episode. Thanks. This is insane. And the only reason we haven't heard of this woman is it's because purely she's a woman. Be- <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason. Because if she was fucking Andrew Carnegie, we'd it, all know. We, listen, they not only that, they have so many buildings named after her. <laughs> no. There would have been History Channel episodes. There would have been all this different stuff. Instead, they're like, she's the witch of Wall Street. Witch of Wall Street. But uh, hey, hey, uh, Martin Scorsese. You did the Wolf of Wall Street. Where's the witch? Yeah. Give us the witch. Um, two days after her death, the New York Times paid tribute to Green. And I have the, the quote from the newspaper. It was that Mrs. Green was a woman that made her career the subject of endless curiosity, comment, and astonishment. Her habits were the legacy of New England ancestors who had the best reasons for knowing, quote, the value of money. Or and never wasting it, and for risking it only when their shrewd minds saw an approach of certain profit. Though something of hardness was ascribed to her, that she harmed any is not recorded, and victims of ruthlessness are usually audible. That there are few like her, not cause is not a cause of regret. That there are many less commendable is one. Mm. So she was rich. She didn't hurt anybody. Well. Except for fucking her ex-husband and living at the Well, and that bed. one dude. Well, you know what? He, well, she hurt the ceiling of the bank. Yeah, fuck, fuck him, dude. Um, I mean, I would argue, I would argue that yes, on, but on paper, if you work it way all the way down on some of these pieces of paper, I'm sure that there is loads of oh stuff my god, right oh my bottom. god, yes. But from the New York Times, During those the wonderful Age. journalists uh, who are definitely not influencers or content creators, the New York Times, who definitely isn't being propped up by Wordle right now. Um, they have always been accurate when it comes to the human condition and suffering and uh, exactly how to treat a billionaire directly in the old gray lady. It's almost as if I have an agenda. You really do. Yeah. Uh, the two children, uh, Ned and Sylvia split her estate, which included a 10 year trust for Sylvia administered by Ned. Um, Sylvia died in 1951, leaving an estimated 200 million, um, and donating all of it. But, um, one million. She do, They donated almost all of it to different colleges, churches, hospitals, and other charities. Yeah. Except for about a million of it. New York and New Jersey tried, without success, to receive a portion of the duties from Hetty Green's um, estate. The courts ruled that Hetty Green was a resident of Vermont and no <laughs> other state. In 1920, Vermont received 
$52,986 from Hetty Green's estate, along with an additional $5,000 from each of the children that had to pay during the estate That's tax. That's it? Yeah. That's all they got? That's all Vermont got. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, my God. She hurt so many people. <laughs> Like that's yeah. that's insane. Like that's money that could have been used. Jesus, she's never paying a tax, y'all. Never. So that's the story of Hetty Green. That is a story, and um, a very wealthy woman. Yes, from the Gilded Age. You nailed it. Thanks. Um. So with that, I want to talk about um our patreons. Let's do it. We're going to do it. We're going to take a quick little break. And when we come back, we are going to go down the list. of. There are many of them because hey we huns. missed last week. All the hey huns, all the team leads, all the feds, all the different people. We're going to be there and you can join them after these messages. Pearl mania, Pearl mania, Pearl mania, Pearl mania. 500.net. I've heard from many of our listeners that they also say that along dot net. that five Pearlmania 500 dot net because that is where you can become a team leader right here and have your name be said at the end of each episode one time. One time. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I was like, oh, I'm a big lead. However, before I get started, I would like to say that there are a bunch of different members who have joined or rejoined in the past who mm -hmm. have not, we've not been getting the notifications for. I don't know whether or not that's because they were a free member and became a paid member or however they came in. So if you've never gotten a shout out, please make sure that you message us through the Patreon messenger so we can get down. And which is the reason why we have 25 this week. Let's fucking go. Of people that we want to say thank you very, very so much for. And the first one, I think, is a direct shout out to Mrs. P. Okay, cool. It is celiac underscore girlies support celiac underscore girlies hey hon let's fucking go dude listen we're eating rice we're eating potatoes we're eating corn okay yep we're having a good time yeah we don't cry at night my favorite thing about your celiacs <laughs> was when we first started dating was my mom uh trying to explain it to her and she would hold up a potato and be like can you do this and yeah. you're like yes i can do yes. potato and then she was like but you can't do and then she would pick up a potato loaf and be like <laughs> But you can't do that. You're like, I cannot do that. So, okay. <laughs> but what about this? And she just hold up just a bag of rice. And you'd yeah. be like, let me read the label. Actually, weirdly, I can't do that type no. of rice. Uh, after that, this next one, I'm going to tell you, this next one, mm -hmm. very smart. Okay. This is a very smart way to get a plug on our show. Okay. Uh, let's hear it for www.tamedsociety.com. Bath, body, and aromatherapy products. Wash your ass and legs, weirdo, weirdos. <laughs> That's from tamedsociety.com. Uh, I don't know anything more about this beyond what I just said. So I don't, <laughs> I don't. Uh, we can't, uh, we can't say that we know this company we or can't, what they're sell selling. But what I can say is. But I think you should wash. What are we washing? Uh, you wash your ass and why, legs. Why do you wash your ass and legs? Specifically your legs, your legs, white people. Yeah. Um, I know that's a, that's a, that's a white I person thing. I didn't know we weren't doing that. I didn't know either. I just, there's so many white people have been like, yeah, I don't wash my legs. Why wouldn't you wash your legs? I under, I can understand one thing, which is that the soap is dripping down. However, I remember I wash my feet like very heavily. Yeah. When I'm in the shower, especially because I remember a stand up comic mm -hmm. from the late 90s, early 2000s had a whole bit about washing your feet. And about how his buddy told him, well, I'm standing in the soapy water. And I'm like, that's the dirty soapy water that reaches down there. So I lift my foot up and scrub it every single time. Yeah. All You're, because of one stand-up bit. You have one to stand up friction bit. on your body to get rid of the dead skin cells and the oil. You can't just expect the soapy water running down to do the job. You got to get in there. I don't know. But listen, TamSociety.com. All right. I don't hey, know. Hey, hon. I love what you're doing. Yeah. Why don't you pull up their website and see what they got over there. After that. We have president of Fishbine Fan Club. <laughs> That's right. We, it, it, it does pain me that we haven't heard uh, Fishbines uh, be pulled up in a recent story, but hopefully soon. Listen. After that, we have Caribou Puppy. Oh, hey, hon. I like that. After that, we have Jazz Knowles. Hey, Jazz. I wonder if they're re uh, related to Beyonce. I don't know, but a lot of people were looking for you at the DNC because everyone was convinced Beyonce was supposed to come I think out. It was, here's what I think. I think that they released a secret that they were like, oh, Beyonce's going to be here. Just to make sure that everybody stayed till the end. No, I think they said like a weird, I think they said a thing and then did not realize how big it was going to be. I think, I think what actually happened was they said something cryptically mm -hmm. and then people went crazy to the point it, it became Beyonce, Taylor Swift. At one point, 
I was sitting next to Phil DeFranco, and he said, and I quote, uh, CBS News says Travis Kelsey is here? And I said, no, he isn't. <laughs> and he was like, but CBS News is reporting it. I'm like, well, they're reporting wrong. Lies. Uh, I would know if Travis Kelsey is here. I could feel it. Yeah. Uh, after Jazz Knowles, we have Amanda Huber. Hey, hon. After that, we have Catco. Catco. Hey, yeah, hon. Yeah, well, that that's with K's. Oh. Yeah. It's like Catco. Uh, Cutco Knives. Yeah, no, it's like Catco from uh, the Supergirl series on CW, which I have watched most of and really enjoy. And Cat uh, Grant is a cool okay, character. Okay, I found the website, use. and these look really nice. Do they? Let me see. Let me yeah, see. Let me see. Let me see. Look at this. Oh, it's a nice looking website. Yeah. They got a shop now button. Look, they got like bath bombs, incense Ooh. sticks. Oh, black magic candles. You guys are getting, let me tell you to you guys over there at <laughs> tamedsociety.com. You're getting a deal right now. Five <laughs> bucks. Wait, go back. Go back. Is that a coil? I need that. A Conan coil ash. Oh, no, that's mind. the thing that grind. No, 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 no. I thought that was for my scalp. <laughs> Sorry, I okay, thought that was okay. another scalp back brush. The, okay, no, no, let's go back. Go. Catco, let's hear it for Catco. Yeah. After that, we have Caitlin from Jersey, underscore via Dell, underscore via Virginia, underscore via the void. Hey, hon. Hey, girl. You've been, You've been everywhere. traveling. Been traveling. After that, this next one is difficult because it's just it's just a collection. I feel like I'm missing the vowels. Okay. Um, uh, but it's C R T V N M. C R T V N M. Okay. Hey, hon. I feel like I'm missing something. We're there. definitely missing something. It's probably There's something funny there. There's a context in there we're not that we're it. not getting. Yeah. Mm. Like, cra- cra- Crantum? Cr- Don't do that stuff. No. Okay. Don't do the Crantum, guys. After that, we have Patrick Woods. Hey, hon. After that, we have Evelyn Sexton. Hey, hon. After that, we have Mike underscore Lindell's underscore missing underscore mustache. Found it. Let's go. Found it, you son of a bitch. Where's my promo code? It's got code? saltine crumblies in it. Where's my fucking promo code? Smells bad. After that, we have Sammy Sue Sweetheart. Hey, hon. After that, we have Allison Lee. Hey, hon. After that, we have Carolyn S. S. After that, we have please underscore read underscore fantastic land. Fantastic land. Let me write look it. it up. I got, we'll no, look I got to write it to the. I got to add it to the list. <laughs> There's a whole spreadsheet, y'all. I I wanted to say this next one is. The funniest one to me. Okay. It says as following, any joke name I come up with won't be that funny. You're a genius. <laughs> You're the smartest person in the hey, world. Hon. As someone who battles constantly with uh, what a name should be for anything, you're a genius. Incredible. Any joke name I come up with won't be that funny. After that, we have Mrs. Multiverse. Hey, hon. After that, we have Ribbit Rabbit Roll, Dice Maker on Etsy. Oh, hey, hon. That's Ribbit Rabbit Roll. That's They're funny. getting smart. They're, They're getting, getting smart. smart. They're starting to really I see what's crash happening in here. here. I see what's happening here. We might have to add in a special advertiser tier. <laughs> yeah, Get an extra fiver from these fuckers. <laughs> Get the promo tier. After that, we have Jonah. Hey, hon. After that, we have Coco Boom Slang. Okay, I really like Coco Boom Slang. That's it's a, it's a really cool. great name. I wish it was a snack. I feel like Coco, <gasps> cereal. Coco Boom Slang, that feels like an 80s wrestler. Coming to the ring, Coco Boom Slang. I feel like it's like some type of chocolatey uh, breakfast cereal. We have a couple returning members. Okay. Uh, Voxel.loves.u. Oh, hey Thanks, hon. Voxel. And Endak. 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 That's how, it's, that's how we're ending? No, Endak. because we're actually going to end with this one. Okay. Uh, this person who joined uh, about a month ago but never got their shout out. Oh, okay. Because they've been, quote, stuck in Koala Canyon. <laughs> I want to be in Koala Canyon. It's I want to be stuck koala in Koala hugs. Canyon. A lot of chlamydia. Whoa, whoa. What? Koala's got a lot of chlamydia. Everybody knows. It's not like you have to like, call it out like that. Like, they're just I, dealing with it. I'm not calling it out. I'm just stating that a lot of people know and a mm. lot of people feel weird about it. How, what's Fantastic Land? Uh, it's a horror book uh, that takes place in a theme park where fun is guaranteed. Is that the Stephen King book or no? It's a different book. No, it's not Stephen King. Oh, okay, it's by good, a guy good. named Mike Bakovoven. Gotcha. Bakovin. Okay. So with that, everyone, thank you guys so much hey, for continuing. Hey, thanks for listening. Thank you so much for I listening. I had a great time putting this stuff together. This was an amazing episode. You, you did a great job. All of our Patreons are so funny and attractive. <laughs> um, you're all pretty people. Um, and don't ever forget it, all right? I don't want... Don't fuck... No, don't. No. Put the headphone back in. You're beautiful and you're smart. And you need to tell your boss right now you need to fucking raise. That's true. Facts. Go back to your boss and be like, when's the last time you gave me a raise? That's that's how you open the question. Hey, when's the last time you gave me a raise? Bars. And then just stare at them. See how it works. That way they at least know. They know you they know. They at least know that you know that inflation's been raging 
and you have been raging too. And they too. want you to fill out an a, a annual review about yourself. Yeah. Here's a review. Um, I think today's secret word. Oh. For the comments. Okay. I feel like um, I feel like it should be onion related. Oh. Okay. What do you think? I think it should be onion or the onion emoji. Ooh, is there an onion emoji? There's an onion emoji. Okay, you can either write the word onion or put an onion emoji. Yeah. In the comments. Uh, guys, thank you so much for continuing to listen to this podcast. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for everybody who listens to the wrap-up. Thank you for everybody who's a Patreon member and for everybody who makes it all the way to the end of the episode. Hell yeah. Mrs. P, anything you'd like to say before we go? Guys, have a great week. Summer's almost over. Fall is almost here. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Let's get... Listen. I want to unpack my sweater so bad. I want to tell you all right now, you're allowed to unpack the cardigans so that way they don't smell as dusty on the yeah. day you need them. Absolutely. Okay. Hang them up. You ready? Get the wrinkles out. The secret word of the day is onion. Onion. Let's roll. <laughs> too many frauds and too many scammers that we wish weren't real. Too many cons and too many spammers and we're starting to feel like we got too many tabs open. It's too many tabs. Remember to smile.